firstly, this is the second book that I'm promoting, and it's like having babies, twins, because they prepare them both at the same time. This one here, Shattering Stereotypes, it's a really important book. It's, it's a very political book, and um, there's nothing like it. There is absolutely nothing like it um, anywhere written in Australia, because here, we talk about Australian and Canadian GPs, Indigenous GPs and their families talking about the experiences of what is it like to come through this, this Western medical system. And, and um, so what happened was uh, 2008 I started the Indigenous GP Registrar's Network where we had to support, uh, well, we needed to have support for each other for our Indigenous GP registrars. And, um, you know, the government's tightening up their belt everywhere. I'm sure you've felt that as well. So I thought about how do we continue to find support for our Aboriginal doctors without, you know, putting our money out for the government and giving a little bit when we know that we need so much, uh, we need a lot of resources for our doctors to succeed. There's lots of resources for medical students and then in the hospital system it just goes smaller and smaller and then for registrars there's not a lot of resources. So how do we get that support? Um, so this book is a fundraiser for, for our, our doctors um, and it's a lot job by everybody that was involved in this. Okay, um, so I, I put a encourage you to, to continue that love and pull out a fifty dollar bill for this book later. And you will because once you start reading these stories, it, it's it's amazing. You won't be able to put it down, honestly. Um, so I started out by asking some of my peers and uh, we didn't want to bother the registrars because their focus has to be on studying for their exams and getting through the fellowship. We need to have Aboriginal GPs out there. And the reason we need that is because, you know what, people like to, Aboriginal people like to have Aboriginal doctors. Everybody likes to have that um, familiarity. There's been a, look, no doubt, history of colonisation here, oppression, racism, means that there's not a lot of trust in the hospital systems and hospital doctors. This is the place where Aboriginal people are thought, Okay, this is where we go to die. It's been like that, it still is like that. So how do we change that? Well, one of the ways that we change that is by having more Aboriginal people within the system. And one of those ways is having Aboriginal fellows, GPs, okay? And so, because then the patients will figure all the way through the system, not just in hospital, okay? The whole way through. Um, our doctors, our patients will feel more comfortable. Um, and I guess it comes from a basis of trust, of shared experiences and shared knowledge. But you know, we as Australia have also got that shared knowledge of the history, some more than others. And it's how we choose to use that shared knowledge, whether we um, tune it um, to be able to help um, Aboriginal people or other people in general, or even how we as practitioners can reflect on our practice so that our communication skills are even better, so that we can communicate better with our patients, so that we can get a better outcome, better health outcome for our patients. Anyway, so I asked, um, I asked some of um, my peers to write and tell me about why, why did they choose to do medicine? Why did they want to be a doctor? And what were their experiences like in medical school and internship, hospital training? Um, and in, in gen general practice as a registrar and now as a, as a fellow. The good, the bad, the happy, the sad, all of those experiences. And I did not know, I knew my story, but you know, in our lives we're just so busy racing around, we just, we don't have time to stop and talk and say, now tell me your story. Because we're just running the whole time and that's our life. So in this, they wrote stories and, and the very, amazing, powerful stories that that um, I certainly didn't know about. And I didn't know the character of this book. What was the character going to be like? So I deliberately did not write the introduction on the conclusion until I'd got those stories in. And then partway along the way, I thought, well, hang on. What's happening 
in other countries. Okay, what's happening in Canada? Is this just us having some of these issues or are these issues somewhere else? So I contacted a couple of colleagues from Canada and I said, can you, and I asked them the same question, can you write about your stories as well? And so they did. And what came back is a very, very powerful book. And it tells, and it's almost unedited. There's very little, this has, this has the warts. It has warts and all, and it's important to have that. Because we need to know the truth about what is happening within our health and medical system so that we can create the changes that needs to be made to create better health outcomes for our patients. Because you know what? It's not about us at all. We're not here about us. Yes, we get paid. Yes, we get money. But we're here because we're here about our patients. And that's what we have to keep on remembering. It's our patients. That's why we're here. And those patients are our families, our parents, our children, our communities. That's who our patients are, our people. So I wanted to know, like I said, what, what are some of the experiences that not only our doctors have to come up with, but how did their, their husbands, wives, parents feel about this journey that, they, that, they, that their loved ones went on? and tell us about how they felt. That's an indigenous way of thinking. And so this is important because in the Western model, we don't include family. In the Western model, we're individuals. But in the Aboriginal model, in the indigenous model, we're part of a family, we're part of a community, and we go together. So that's another you know, unusual thing about this book. And then at the end of this book, um, look, I, I did a bit of a quick summary. Uh, have you got some of those books around there, Steph? Can you hand some of these books out, please? <coughs> I did a bit of a summary because I wanted to know, you know, there's all these stereotypes around Aboriginal people, and we'll go through some of these. But then, if it's so hard, and it's so hard for anybody to get through this whole system, so what are the strengths what are the, those positive um, factors, um, protective factors that help, help, that have helped these doctors to get through? That's really important to know. And it's really important. So these are the ones that we need to identify and we need to develop, okay? And, and then there, uh, so, so if we go to say page um, 195, please. Um, these are recurring themes, and all I did was dot point. I didn't go into detail, I didn't have time. You know, it was like labour planes. Okay. <laughs> dot points about some of the recurring themes across the board in Australia as well as in Canada. All right. Such as, okay. Some people are blocking these doctors. But in that blocking, that's made these doctors more determined to succeed because some people go, well, you can't do that. And then, depending on your personality, you go, well, you can't tell me that I can't do that because I'm going to show you I can do it. And they have. Um, look, continuing on in the face of oppression and racism, reflecting on positives in our lives to help us to get through, um, using connection to country, um, healing spirits, totems, um, our traditional beliefs, these are some of the protective factors which is very important. Our friends, we hear also IGPR and the Indigenous GP Registrar's Network, that's also a protective factor. Um, the other, you know, when you're going down a race, running down a race, you need to have your cheer, cheer squad, squad helping you, cheering you on, encouraging you just that little bit further to get down the road. And, and that's what needed. And those, that, that cheering squad comes from all different people, all different parts of the community. And that's important. There are other, um, there are negative things too. Oh, some of the coping strategies that have helped, okay? And they're there. Recognition, inclusion of totems, ceremonies, 
speaking with our ancestors, going back to nature. These are things that help to centre us and help us to focus what is important here. How do we eliminate all that noise, that background, that stress and focus here in our spirit, what is important? And then when you focus on what is important, then you can go ahead, okay? You can. There are other issues that some of our doctors, our non-Aboriginal doctors, have not come across, okay? Such as partic being participated in stolen generations. So here we have some of our students, our registrars, our medical students, our doctors, who are, have either been stolen or who have um, first, or who are in a family that have been stolen, or in a second generation family that's been stolen, and all of this impacts, all of that trauma, all of that history, all of those fears gets transferred down through those generations to this particular person. In my family, I had my mother who was stolen, and my two sisters who were stolen. You know, as an example, we've got other doctors who have actually been removed and stolen, their identities changed and, and moved off and um, grown up as white, white people. And it was not until later that they found out that they're Aboriginal. So this impacts on your identity. Um, there's also language differences across cultures. Now that's actually an important point. Language difference, you know, we talk about English, and guess what? English is not my first language. And then in, and so the exams, for example, are written by white middle class people, often living in Melbourne, all right? And the exam experience and where you get the question from in the RACG exam, RACGP exams are most often city practice. But we've got people all around Australia who have different experiences. And when you go to different populations, you find about different health issues about people. And different languages. The language of medicine is different to the language that we speak every day. If we go down to the shops, we speak a different language there than we speak in the hospital system or with one doctor to another, don't we? That's different. And then if you go to an Aboriginal community, guess what? English is not the language that's spoken in most of these communities out in the bush. It's whatever language it is. And then if you go, if you're a doctor from one community, you have, you have to learn a bit of that language there and you go to the next community and you have to learn that language there. And then you get your exams and the exams are in another language. And so putting all of that in your head, that's really quite difficult. Okay? And so it's not all the same. So that's an important thing to consider. Um, also, different levels of colonisation. So, I was talking to Vera today, and Vera wants to have more Aboriginal doctors here and staff, which is fantastic, and that needs to be. But then you think, hey, what is the different levels? Because Aboriginal people are not all the same. We come from different tribes, there are different languages, there are slight cultural differences. We're not all square pegs to fit in a square hole. Okay? And this is important to recognise. So, so when we have um, uh, different, um, different exams or different experiences or different understandings, different expectation, different level of colonisation, different impact, how many, how many people have been impacted by white people for how, many, how long, how many generations, all of these play on those factors. And that, and that unfolds into who you are now and or who your next doctor is going to be. Yeah. Um, there are other things that, um, that came up. And, uh, and I do have to talk about it. Bullying, racism, um, lateral violence, um, and uh, physical violence and neglect of our patients. It's all in here. Okay? There's only one thing that I didn't write in here and that was about um, sexual harassment where um, a doctor, an Aboriginal doctor, was asked by the supervisor to join in a threesome. Okay? 
Now, when you actually, and that's significant because when you have power in differences, the supervisor, who is the supervisor, is a consultant usually. Now, if you go to page 46 in this book, please, it makes it very, it, for you guys who are leaders in, in, in Eastern Health, it's really important to be on the ball for this because of that power imbalance. I'm sure you know about this. Because if somebody is being bullied and they were, that, that a medical hierarchy is there and they're being um, employed, uh, bullied by somebody higher up that level, that affects their confidence. That means that they may not know where to go because, you know, the supervisor is the person that marks them and then the career can be affected. So on page 46, I can see that, Ian, you haven't got that. So I'll read it out aloud. This particular doctor, who is, uh, was my supervisor, in speaking about the Aboriginal community where this person was working, how, how do you feel about your community that you work, that you're the only doctor in the community and your responsibility to help the health of all of those people there? And we're talking up to 2,000 people at a go, one doctor for 2,000 people. It's not uncommon. And the doctor says all of these people should be shot, the place bombed and burned to the ground. Okay? That's an example of somebody that's extremely racist and I'm hoping that we don't find that. I'm hoping that um, we certainly don't need it and our patients certainly don't need it. But it's in the book because it needs to be said and, it, and that racism needs to be recognised for what it is and to be told, no, this is not acceptable. It might have happened before. It's not acceptable anymore. Um, and so that's where, um, as an, as, as um, an organisation, you may be able to help there. I'm sure you'll be able to help. There are um, other things here, um, stereotypes, white privilege. Okay, as an example, uh, under white privilege, the risks and threats of removing of our children. And you would think, oh, a doctor, you don't have to have any worry about that, right? That's not true. It's not true. We had a doctor just, um, I, in fact, I know of two doctors whose children have been threatened to be removed from family and children's services. Uh, so we had a, a case where, um, uh, so the, the son of the, the doctor and his partner were having, you know, domestic issues and so they separated. But because she was pregnant, she came into that, um, into the uh, uh, surveillance of family and children's services. And, and so the son was living at the, the doctor's home and the doctor then had um, welfare. So um, come through and check the home to see if that child, that home is safe, a safe, good, reasonable place to have her grandchildren. Um, that's really, I don't know, I just don't know of any other ethnic group where that's happened. Does anybody else know? No? Please let me know if you know. I don't know of any other doctor that's had their home checked out. And other issues. Sad, um, because for IGPRN we've had to go out there and and um, advocate for our page, for our registrars because we need them to get through. There's a bottleneck. So you have about 300 medical students across Australia and about 150 in the hospital systems. And there's 30 GP registrars, uh, Aboriginal GP registrars. And do you know how many Aboriginal GPs there are in Australia? Well, actually, I heard today, because we just had graduation ceremonies over the weekend, we now have 35 in Australia. 35 Aboriginal GPs in 2016. This is really bad. But it's much better, much better than it was, because um, a few years ago, and time goes so fast, I was actually the first medical Aboriginal medical student from the Northern Territory in 200 years of colonisation. Now that's bad. So to get to 35 is great. And there's all those stereotypes that, 
that we can't achieve. You know, you would have heard the stereotypes. Um, um, and, and these stereotypes have actually come straight out of the writings of these doctors. Um, one of the, uh, the Aboriginal people receive handouts, or that we have low skills and capacity to change situations around us. That's not true. That's why we need, but it is difficult for anybody, but you need to have the right supports in place to be able to help uplift, uplift to increase self-esteem, to increase self-worth, to get rid of oppression, to say, no, we value this person. You know, I was taught the value, the worth of an Aboriginal doctor to an Aboriginal person is priceless because we bring not only health and medicine to our patients, <coughs> we bring hope to our people. Aboriginal doctors are without doubt our warriors, our modern day warriors. Because here we have to jump hurdle after hurdle after hurdle to get through to help create that change, to help our people to survive. And yes, we cannot do it alone. Obviously, 35 GPs in Australia. Boy, we need all your help, you guys. And we need all your mates' help. But we need that help by also supporting uh, those ones who are trying to get through. We can't bottleneck like this which is what's happening, medical students, hospital, um, registrar training. We need to widen 